Good morning, everybody. This is another live briefing, but today we're going to be talking about a very unusual setup, and that is severe weather with even tornado potential in Arizona. It looks like Phoenix north through the Flagstaff area definitely could have a favorable co-location of instability and deep layer wind shear. Even low-level wind shear could uh, bring a threat of tornado potential as well. So we're going to break down this threat additionally. Uh, this is different, of course, from Tornado Alley coming alive next week, but this is today. Big time severe weather underway. You can already see a lot of uh, surface based capes starting to build there across Arizona with decent moisture. Stepping forward with time by 2Z, all of that convective inhibition is gone. And right near Phoenix and a little bit north of Phoenix, basically in an east to west oriented belt across Arizona, you do get those easterly surface winds of about 10 knots, and that's definitely going to enhance that bulk shear and the threat for supercell storms. You do get a little bit of a veering out of those winds from Phoenix and off to the south. You get more of those westerly surface winds. That's gonna be associating with a drying condition, almost like a little bit of a mesoscale dry line that's gonna push east across southern Arizona. But to the north of that, you have that nice belt of moisture hanging on associated with those easterly winds, basically from southeastern Arizona all the way up into central Arizona, up near the Flagstaff area, and then those storms erupt right along that boundary. Looks like where those uh, subtle westerly winds meet up with those easterlies, almost like a subtle dry line. Two points drop into about uh, below 1,000 behind the dry line with those westerly surface winds. But then from southeastern Arizona up through the Flagstaff area, you've got a nice belt of those uh, easterly surface winds. You're looking at the wrap analysis here, the wrap model. And even though the low-level wind shear isn't incredibly impressive as indicated uh, by the wrap, I do think that some of those terrain features, funneling of those surface winds to have some enhanced localized easterlies beneath these uh, 30 to 40 knot uh, southwesterly mid-level winds certainly could lead to a potential of tornadoes where you could squeeze out some of that more favorable low-level wind shear. But basically, you're looking at in a belt uh, 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 from southeastern Arizona up into central and northern Arizona within this area here. An arc of supercells should develop. A little bit of a subtle dry line feature will mix off to the east, and that should be from Phoenix down to Tucson. Should take you out of that more favorable moisture for severe weather. Uh, but definitely looks interesting up here. A lot of meridional mid-level flow. That definitely could uh, decrease your low-level shear a little bit. Usually with these due south to north uh, motions, you need a really strong easterly low-level jet. So about a kilometer up, you need those really strong easterly winds. Everything will be a little bit flip-flop. But if you can get some right movers in here, then you might be able to squeeze out a little bit uh, greater low-level wind shear out there. And uh, definitely a very uh, interesting system. Definitely a little closed upper level low here over Southern California. To the east of it, though, some decent wind shear that could develop and let's take a look at the surface map really quick and uh boy this site just isn't what it used to be but dew points here into the low 60s across southern arizona and uh let's take a look at the three kilometer nam model i assume that the uh, hrrr has m issues over mixing uh those uh, that low level moisture across arizona as well so here you can see the three kilometer NAM surface temperature. Let's go up to 500 so that we could show this uh, subtle upper level low here. There it is, Southern California as of Tuesday, Tuesday morning. And uh, you can see that stronger flow downstream, meridional mid level flow there. Let me make sure that this whole entire thing is showing. Need to zoom out a bit. There we go. I think that should work. So there is the parent storm system on the three kilometer NAM spinning away here over Southern California across northwestern Mexico as well. So let's go up to 20Z. It's about midday out here in Arizona, monsoon time. Let me slide this thing up just a little bit so that we can see that Pivotal Weather logo as well. So that is a negative factor for tornadoes is that a majority of this upper level flow is due south to north and you don't really get that belt 
of easterlies just above the ground to generate very favorable low level wind shear but you do have plenty of bulk shear with this configuration and at about 21 z out there at about 2 p.m uh, pacific daylight time that trough really starts to eject from southern california look at that that's a pretty sharp trough ejection there and actually those upper level winds turn just a little bit westerly with time here by about 3 p.m near peak heating when those storms are likely to develop there looking at 850 just to assess the low level wind shear it's pretty close to the ground over a large portion of Arizona, but not much of a low-level jet out there. You're really going to depend on some funneling of those 1-2 to two kilometer winds between terrain features or between mountains. You really need those easterly winds with these uh, relatively meridional or more south-to-north, mid- and upper-level winds. But we do have quite a bit of instability out there at your surface base cape with those low 60s dew points you do have you're pushing close to 2000 cape out here across central arizona and that's in a belt from southeastern arizona up into the central portion of the state with some westerly surface winds decreasing that low level wind shear and also mixing out some of that moisture into the 50s there from phoenix down toward tucson better moisture to the north of there north of phoenix across that higher terrain to the south of the mountains a little area here of high plains and sanity to the south of Flagstaff could certainly set up. Looking at your 0 to 3 kilometer EHI, not a lot of low level wind shear out here to speak of, and that's why you're kind of losing some of those colors out there. But your supercell composite, you do have some non zero locations here of, of bulk shear greater than about 30 knots to generate those supercell storms, maxed out from central Arizona toward the southeastern portion of the state. Let's look at the dew points as well. There's those dew points. So the 3 kilometer NAM does mix out those dew points into the upper 50s. And that's going to be a little bit of a mitigating factor for that tornado potential, except right along this boundary where you can get those surface temperatures a little bit cooler into the 80s, maybe even the 70s there. But then you can see from Phoenix down toward Tucson, temperatures rise up into the 90s. Uh, the, the moisture mixes out. You get a little bit more of a westerly surface wind out there as well. So not quite as favorable, but right along this differential heating boundary to the north of Phoenix, well to the south of Flagstaff, maybe toward the uh, Sedona area, uh, could get some supercell storms back toward the southeastern portion of the state. Uh, you get those temperatures into the upper 70s and the low 80s down there with the better moisture mixing out back behind it. But this is basically a pseudo dry line feature with 40 knot uh, relatively meridional winds. So I think you're going to have uh, no problem for these storms to kind of move off of this west to east oriented differential heating or mixing boundary there, basically a pseudo dry line. Uh, they should be able to move off the nose of that as well up toward the globe area, up toward Payson, Arizona, I think could be a good target area as well. So let's see if we can take a look at what the three kilometer NAM shows for that composite reflectivity storm mode. And it does show these supercell storms basically lifting south to north off that differential heating boundary well to the north of Phoenix there but across central Arizona and toward the southeastern portion of the state. And uh, you can see the three kilometer NAM even has those anvils going south to north with those meridional mid-level flow and you could get um, more of a northeasterly storm motion with these supercell storms when you get a little bit of some right movers there. But really, that Sedona area, you could get some red rocks out there across central Arizona. Beautiful supercell storms likely to develop by about 2 to 3 p.m. out here. And uh, lifting off of that differential heating boundary, almost like a pseudo dry line feature. It looks like a couple of different waves, too, coming off of that west to east oriented dry line to the north of Phoenix up towards Sedona. So you might get a couple of different waves of those supercell storms moving off of that dry line, evolving off to the north, and then by about 7, 8 p.m. you definitely lose that surface heating. You're going to lose that potential for those tornadoes. But the three kilometer NAM is pretty bullish on this setup across central and northern Arizona, initiating those storms at about 21 Z. So about 1 to 2 p.m. they start to initiate couple different supercell storms first over western arizona initial cluster evolving 
as early as 20z so as early as midday here we're getting pretty close to where we're going to start to see some of those supercell storms develop probably going to be some amazing structure from our monsoon chasing friends out there in the southwestern u.s i probably should be down there myself let's see uh what the uh r r model shows low level shear is going to be lacking but there is plenty of bulk shear for this cluster of supercell storms across central arizona Maybe even a mode down into southeastern Arizona as well. That's it. Let's go back to the initiating time. Initiating just ahead of that upper level low that's over Southern California at 20Z. So a couple different waves of supercell storms, clusters lifting off of that west to east oriented differential heating boundary. I do think that there is a chance, a non-zero chance of even a tornado out there as well. And it does look like the HRRR model has a decent handle on this setup as well. Very similar to the three kilometer NAM. Strong agreement out there. And it looks like out here in the desert southwest that the overmixing bias isn't quite as apparent in the HRRR as it is across the high plains and to the east of the Rockies, at least with this setup. Uh, relative agreement in the dew points, mixing down into the upper 50s out there. But right along that differential heating boundary to the north of Phoenix, where those temperatures could be into the 80s, maybe even the 70s there, and those supercells should move into that deeper moisture, sliding off of that mixing boundary into central Arizona there. Could be a uh, tornado or two. Bulk shear does favor a supercellular mode. There's your 500 millibar winds, 40 knots there, over top of some calm to some areas of easterlies at 10 knots. So you've got about 30 to 40 knots of bulk shear, favorable for those supercell storms. So pretty exciting here uh, for our Arizona folks. Looking at your surface base cape. There is your cape here, 1500 to 2000 cape. Just on the north side of that differential heating boundary. Mixing kind of carves out the cape a little bit across southern Arizona, but decent instability off to the north of it between Phoenix and Flagstaff all the way back to the Colorado border there. Just to the south of Havasu could be interesting. Looking at some of these forecast soundings from the HRRR. Not very favorable in terms of a low-level shear. That's a really skinny hodograph there, but you do have very steep lapse rates all the way up to the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Steep low-level lapse rates as well. 76 over 59 there, just on the moist side of that boundary. Quite a bit of cape there. Steep mid-level lapse rates. Kind of a weird low-level profile, as you'd expect out there in the southwestern U.S., But a lot of cape, sometimes these closed upper lows down here in the southwestern U.S. will cause tornadoes and a nice arc of supercell storms. Just because it's the desert southwest doesn't mean you're not going to get tornadoes, but usually you have weakness in the flow from 700 millibars down to the surface. But still about 20 knots out of the due south, not too bad. You really need a belt of due easterlies, though, at about 30 to 40 knots with these meridiano storm motions to have a really robust tornado threat across central and northern Arizona. But that's where I'd target, probably up near Sedona. I'd try to get some of those red rocks out there, decent zero to three kilometer listening, maybe to the west, out a little closer to the California border there. A nice belt of some better low level wind shear, probably getting funneled with the terrain. And look at that photograph out there further west. You're able to find some of those patches of easterlies out there and where you can, it encourages a very favorable hodograph for tornado potential, even out there across uh, a western Arizona, across western Arizona, northeasterly storm motion at 30 knots, showing more of a right mover, a little bit more of a backed fl flow. Some easterlies there, even a kilometer above the ground, could uh, enhance some of that tornado potential. So likely off to the west, the HRRR is suggesting this target area, west central Arizona out there, that's at 21Z. You go toward 22Z, and that is relatively consistent run to run, well to the west of Sedona, out near the Colorado border. Some funneling of that moisture, too, some piling up of that moisture into the terrain. So it could be interesting as that cluster of supercells evolves across central and northern Arizona out there. Very interesting setup. And uh, we have another interesting setup next Tuesday that we do need to keep a very close eye on. But this one is today, West Central Arizona. I may have to go live for this a little bit later on, starting at about midday. 
That's when that cluster of supercells evolves. West Central Arizona. Look out down there. This is a live update. Uh, that's why the Storm Prediction Center has this slight risk. It has been upgraded out here. Always a big deal in Arizona when you get a slight risk like this. And it's usually associated with a flash flood threat as well. But I'm not seeing any flash flood watches being issued out there. Precipitable water values are a little bit lower with this. This one's more of a kinematically favorable severe weather setup rather than the slow moving monsoon storms that are able to dump prolific amounts of rainfall. But I'm going to keep an eye on this and I may have to go live a little bit later on as there could be a couple of tornado warnings out here. And I do like that west central Arizona target area according to the HRRR which it does appear to not have as much of that dry bias as we've seen at least to the east of the Rockies. So thank you everybody for tuning in to my weather reports. Could get some tornadoes here in central western Arizona. We also need to watch uh, for the potential of Tornado Alley coming alive early next week. Looks like Tuesday is going to be that big event with a textbook dry line setting up across western Kansas down into the Texas Panhandle. Thank you everybody for tuning into my weather report. Never stop chasing.